G'day ladies and gents, Cubic Midi here with Wavetech's brand new ultimate main storage. Check it out, we have storage for items. Oh, and that? Yeah, that's just the decoration for the storage. Now this is Wavetech's main storage. This project has been absolutely massive as it's almost been an entire year since I first announced the initiation of this project in my Shulker Farm video. Now I want to give a special thanks to all of the people from Wavetech who helped out along the way. Such as Trolley and Cuckoo who helped with the prototyping of technical components, Max as well as Inventor for designing the concept for this beautiful interior, Anti and Spey who designed this absolutely gargantuan exterior decoration, as well as many more players from Wavetech who helped out building the thing in survival. So what is all the commotion about main storages? After all, all you need to store your items is a couple of chests, right? Well unfortunately that doesn't quite cut it on a technical server such as Wavetech. Because on Wavetech we have insane farms such as this gold farm which is so fast that it absolutely murders my frame rates. And the basic premise of a server like this is that we want to build crazy machines as well as beautiful decorations to complement those machines. And all of those items needed to build the machines and create the decorations need to be stored somewhere. And a main storage system such as this one can be a major asset to a technical server. Because I don't know if you noticed, but the player's inventory is somewhat to be desired. So we need large redstone machines to pick up the slack and do things that the player's inventory could only dream of. For example, do you need 50,000 stone for a project? Well look no further than Wavetech's bulk terminal, where you can simply request the item and receive it in bulk. There we go, that's 46,000 stone blocks delivered in less than 10 seconds. Or maybe you just need a stack of pistons, some scaffolding for a project, a single pickle. Or maybe you just want to touch some grass. A main storage system makes everything you could possibly want accessible on demand. But sorting items isn't the only thing this storage is good for. And we'll go over all of these extra features in detail later on in the video. But first, let's have a quick tour of the storage and experience what it's like to use in survival. Our tour begins at the nether hub. All we need to do is take the green piston bolt heading south to main storage. There we go, it's already set to main storage. Get in the minecart and will automatically be sent all the way there using this advanced piston bolt network designed by the one and only Rufro. Alright, who's the cunny fun who decided to put this here? But back to the piston bolts, we have full integration with the chest cart system for moving items in and out of main storage by the box. To learn more about this piston bolt network, you can watch my previous video titled The Insane Engineering of Wavetech's Piston Bolt Network. But here on the nether side, we have the portal which takes players to the storage, as well as the nether side of the storage's chunk loading system. This chunk loading system is what enables the storage to function completely independently of the player's presence. And you might notice that we've gone ahead and sliced all of the portals for this chunk loading system because we don't want any funny business with pigments spawning in our chunk loading portals. Going through the portal and we are first presented with the utilities area. These are some specialized shulker box displays for tools and armor which do not eject the box until the player closes it. So if I was to remove all these rockets, you can see it doesn't eject the box immediately. And this is pretty handy for when you want to restock things like rockets or food. We also see the first of many item sorting inputs that you can access in order to input items into the sorting system. So in this shulker box, you can simply dump your inventory or you can put entire shulker boxes in the chest. Just over here, we've got an unstackable sorter for sorting various unstackable items that have very unique ways to actually sort them from other items. And over here, we have a pretty powerful mass crafting system, which uses our good friend, the dolphin. This is one of the five storage tech innovations that I introduced in a previous video. But let me give you a demonstration right here for context. Let's say we want to craft a shulker box of observers because we always seem to be running low on them. Well, all I need to do is grab our materials. So we got six boxes of cobblestone.
One shulker box of nether quartz. And two shulker boxes of redstone dust. Then all we need to do is input our items. Make sure we have the recipe selected in item scrolls mass crafting GUI. Then I can just go ahead, hit the button, stand right here on this carpet, activate mass crafting, and open up this crafting table. You just heard the dolphin staggering the entity IDs. And now I get all the items with their staggered pickup priority perfectly into my inventory and craft exactly one shulker box worth of observers. And I can simply input them into this shulker box display and immediately get my shulker box. If you want to learn about how to set up the mass crafting yourself, I gave a little demonstration in the previous video of five simple storage tech innovations. So that there is another shulker box of observers. So what other utilities does our main storage have? Well, you've already seen our bulk interface which I demonstrated earlier. If you go over here around this corner, you can find our advanced shulker box color sorting system. Oh look, it's our second best gold farm. Now on Wave Tech, we allow specifically empty shulker boxes to either stack by the player manipulating them, or stack when they interact with each other as entities on the floor. Now what this allows us to do is not only organize all of our empty shulker boxes by their color, but also store them in a much higher density. And this has some really powerful implications that we'll investigate later on. And it looks like somebody might have missed part of the decoration in this corner. As I said, this was a massive project and we're going to miss some little details when we build the thing in survival. Oh god, that doesn't sound good. And once again, it's an absolute pain having any water anywhere near any redstone. Alright, now I understand why nobody wanted to fix it until now. Anyway, leaving that disaster we just created, if we go over here, we just got a simple little furnace array that you can input items here. I'm not sure why these boxes are here. Yeah, you can just input items here and have them smelted. Over there is a very special section of the storage, and this is the general purpose area. So we have the project rooms where we can have materials prepared for various projects that we want to do in the future as well as some nice spaces for the various map arts that we have on the server and just back here there we go this is our map art gallery essentially over here we have the personal item caches for all the players on wave tech and for some reason a lectern containing the entire manuscript of b movie a random chest for copper variants because honestly who can be bothered trying to sort any of this garbage? And no main storage is complete without an extravagant bedchamber. But do you know what every main storage really needs? That's right, an RGB gaming beacon. Hey buddy, what are you doing here? Are you trying to escape from my storage system? You might recognize this bad boy from my let's build an encoded RGB beacon video. But apparently it also doubles as a mysteriously floating glow squid farm. However, with this design... No holes allowed. Anyway, one major problem with using an encoded RGB beacon like this is that all the logic can get completely screwed up with constant unloading and reloading. Which is why I have implemented this mechanism which will automatically fully reset the entire logic of the beacon every time the chunks are initially loaded. We can also manually reset the beacon by hitting this note block. If we go ahead and take a look at the beacon beam, I now hit the note block. There we go, if we reset all the logic, the beacon should go back to its default color. There we go, it's going back to white. And now it will start the sequence again at the color black. Note that's orange. Ah, there we go. Yeah, sometimes the controller can be a little bit finicky, but the beauty is that it doesn't matter how screwed up the wiring gets in this machine because it can all be fully reset back to the start of the sequence. So all of these color states can be completely screwed up by initially loading the machine while it's running, 
but then the full reset will completely fix the entire thing automatically. If only every redstone machine could be made resistant to unloading. So RGB gaming beacons are obviously cool and all, but how does the storage fare from a practical standpoint? Well one thing that I have been subtly hinting at is how roomy the interior is to allow us to fly around the storage to quickly get around. A lot of people criticise how wide these halls are, because for some reason people seem to be obsessed with this idea of an extremely compact hall where every item is accessible from a centralised point. However, with wide halls and more space, you'll find that you can close that distance much more efficiently by simply flying around with an elytra. This effectively counteracts the distance between the items presented by the wide halls. Another very subtle feature is breaking up the symmetry by making every hall a unique colour. This means that the player doesn't lose track of their orientation in the storage and can always associate a specific colour with a specific set of items. For example, if I'm looking for any items associated with wood or plants, I know to go to the blue hall where we have all the wood types, as well as lots of different foliage, plants, flowers, and other resources produced by growing crops. If I want something related to decorative building, what I have to do is fly directly into the yellow hall, where we store all the various block types that can be used for building. The red hall is pretty straightforward, it's just all the different colours of things. And the green hall is redstone related stuff as well as other miscellaneous items. However, the only slight oversight with the item layout is that because there's not quite enough room in the color hall, all the different dyes have been put all the way over here in the yellow hall. But obviously this entire item layout can be changed to whatever preferences you want. Taking a closer look at the halls, we have a one wide tileable layout where we have four items per slice. In the roof of each hall, we have these chests which store the various item types that we don't quite have enough of to store in shulker boxes. So what you'll find here is random junk that you won't expect to have very much of. That is, unless you really want to accelerate the decline of coral reefs. On the sides, we have the semi-bulk displays. So what we have here is chest storage for shulker boxes of items. So this can store up to 300,000 of each one of these item types. At the bottom we have a box display for full shulker boxes. Then at the top we have an additional box display which gives us access to the shulker box as it's being loaded. This accessible box loader is actually extremely handy. Because if you can't quite find an item down here in the full box display, it's almost guaranteed that you might actually find it up here because these items come directly from the item sorting. In this way, this storage can effectively help you find really rare and obscure items. For example, do you have an entity alignment that needs a small amethyst bud? Well it just so happens that the item sorter found three of them. Or maybe you need a spare turtle egg to make a second best gold farm. These halls can store any item you need in the amount that you need. Another really cool feature of these halls is say for example I want to build something very intricate such as this windmill. I can bring up a materials list and I can simply go to the respective halls, grab the items, so I need 93 deep slate, so about two stacks. I can then start throwing them into one of these black boxes like so. I can then gather any other resource like the stone bricks. And so now I've essentially started a material box for this windmill. If I want the box all I have to do is press this button. There we go and it gives me a free shulker box. And now I can go to another area of the storage, like say over here to where the walls are, throw it into this square right here. And then it will replace the empty box with the one that I'm currently working with. And now I can grab the stone brick walls like so. Duck them into the box. And then to replace the empty box again. There we go. And now grab the box that I'm working on. And put the empty box back into the display. 
And if you've been organizing projects with main storages in the past, you'll understand how significant this is. Because no longer do you need to place down a box, put items in it, then break it again and potentially break other parts of the storage. And these empty shocker boxes in these floor displays are effectively like electricity in a house where you can tap into it anywhere in the storage. And it will surprise you at how complicated it was to actually set this distribution system up. Alright, so now that we've looked at everything that the player will interact with in survival, let's head over to a creative world to have a look at the intricate mechanics inside of the machine. Here we are in a single player world in creative mode so we can fly around and look at everything. This is the entire fully assembled storage as it currently is on Wavetex SMP. However, just flying around in here is pretty cramped and all of the intricate systems are all bound together in a complicated mess that makes it very hard to look at. So what I've gone and done is prepared a special area with a full storage breakdown. If I just go ahead and click this button, it'll teleport me to this area where I've pulled apart all the various systems embedded into the main storage. So right here is all of the storage halls fully assembled. Underneath we have the encoded RGB beacon. Off over this end is the bulk system and floating above the storage is two very critical systems for Wavetex main storage. This right here is the entirety of the shulker distribution system. So that includes all of these black shulker box floor displays, the yellow shulker boxes for the item sorting inputs, the purple shulker boxes that you can see in the unstackable sorter, and the grey shulker boxes which we use in all of the accessible box loader displays. Then at the top, this is the item sorting system. We have the overstacked item filters. These ones are configured for two times hopper speed for all of our semi bulk items. In the middle, we have single hopper speed overstacked item filters for the loose chest items. This right here is the item sorting input from the utilities room, along with the dropper line that sends all the shulker boxes that we input into the item sorting all the way to the parallel entity item sorter over here. Now the entire purpose of this machine is to make use of the fact that we have multiple item filters for multiple different item types that could theoretically all sort their particular item at the same time. And what this machine does is make sure that only one instance of each item type is being sorted at a given time. Because you can imagine, if we fill up this machine with shulker boxes filled with items and start unloading those shulker boxes into the water streams which distribute the items around the storage into all of these item filters, if we unload the items into the water streams faster than the item filters can handle them, then the items will overflow and not be sorted properly. And this simple proposition gives rise to the entire field of parallel entity item sorting in Storage Tech. In fact, my very first video about Storage Tech covered the design and development of a parallel entity item sorter. But then a bunch of really smart people worked for a very long time to make this machine and I talked a lot about this machine in a previous video about Minecraft simple storages. In that video I also touched on this machine which was going to be used in Wavetex main storage. In fact this was the original parallel entity item sorter that we built on the storage in survival. But unfortunately things did not work out very well. And to understand why, we're going to need to talk about how this machine actually works. So the basic premise of the parallel entity item sorting is that I have some boxes filled with items that I want to sort. Some boxes have similar items, whilst other boxes have completely different items. All I want to do is make sure that each one of these boxes has only one item type being unloaded. So for example, I can't have 
two boxes containing the same items being unloaded at the same time. However, if every one of these boxes has different items, then I can unload them all at the same time. A very smart person by the name of Boyan came up with a very ingenious way to actually do this. His idea involved using a set. What you would do, you would input your shulker boxes into the machine. And what it would do is it will take the first item that it can find out of the shulker box, add it to a set, and then it will start unloading that shulker box. If another shulker box comes along, with that same item in the first slot, that box gets rejected. When that box finishes being unloaded, all we do is take out the last item that was unloaded from that box and then use that to pull this item out of the set and now it's ready to accept another box containing the same item. This ensures that you only have a one instance of a particular item being unloaded at any given time. But it also allows multiple items to be unloaded at the same time, effectively parallelizing the sorting speed of all of the different item types. There we go, we've got all of our different item types coming into our water stream at the same time. And this is a brilliant parallel entity item sorter for any storage that for you to just slap on and sort items in parallel. But unfortunately, Wavetex main storage isn't any storage. Wavetex main storage includes these double speed item filters, which can sort items at twice the speed of a conventional storage. And unfortunately, this is where Boyan's approach falls short, because once an item is added to his set, all you can do is verify that that item is in the set. You can't actually verify the amount of that item in the set. And then how do you differentiate between item types that you can sort at two times speed and item types that can only be sorted at one times speed? So unfortunately, Boyan's approach just was not good enough for my needs. So I had to design my own system. My idea was to literally do the opposite of what Boyan does. So what Boyan does is have an empty set that items get added to and so my approach was to make a full set that items get removed from. And so every time you go to unload a shulker box with a particular item in the first accessible slot, you take that item, use that item to then remove an item from the set, unload the shulker box and then, only then, that we put the item back in the set so another box can take up its slot. This idea worked really well in theory, but then the nightmare began. You see, my original design had this extremely ugly dropper spam that would make horrible clicking noises every time it ran, and its entire purpose was to take items from this first item unloader array which I might have just stolen from Boyan's first item unloader, and then brute force these items until they find the first available slot in the set. But it turns out there was a big problem with this layout. You see, in a recent video about making a redstone shop box maker, we learned that you can backfill the slots of a shulker box to a predetermined fill level for each slot by simply backfilling the shulker box by removing dummy items like so. Well, interestingly, it turns out that in the parallel entity item sorter approach that I designed, this mechanic actually works against us. Let's say, for example, we input two shulker boxes of stone, like so. So now we have removed two stone from the set, and so no more boxes of stone can make their way to the unloader array. If we then start unloading a box of acacia logs and then the acacia logs finish before any of the stone boxes, the acacia log gets put back into this slot right here and now when the stone comes back, it can't go back into this chest. So where does the stone go? Well, it drifts all the way down the set all the way down until I can find another available slot. And now, 
our stone has moved all the way down here. And the worst part is, if we go to sort the log again, and then another item comes along and occupies its slot, now we're in a situation where these two acacia logs can actually get separated into completely different chests. This is known as set drift and it is very bad. This problem has caused me to scream internally as I've been trying to fix it for the past two months. The fix that is currently on Wavetech's main storage in survival is the addition of this multi-item sorter which forces each item type to go to a very specific chest. And this was extremely irritating because I had to go ahead and gather even more examples of these items to put into the multi-item sorter than what was already in the set. Oh, and what made it even worse is that any case where we had items being sorted at two times speed, I needed to leave empty slots in case items drifted into different slots. This problem of set drift has effectively completely killed the idea of using an inverse set. This problem of set drift is extremely apparent if you have a look at the set on the Wavetech server, where we have this ugly mess of items going all over the place in the same inventory. Like, just look at this, it's just... Ugh. Kills my insides. To finally put all of this anger and frustration to rest, I decided to listen to a suggestion given to me by Glotz, which was to take my approach of using the inverse set and essentially invert it once more and instead of removing items from the set to assign items, I would add items to a pre-existing set until no more items could be added and that would dictate when we could stop sorting items. And this is finally a valid solution for a variable parallel entity item sorter which can sort boxes at a speed that you can dictate simply by adjusting the amount of that item in the set. As it stands, I will not be replacing Wavetech's current parallel entity item sorter with this new design. However, I will include a schematic of the new system in the description down below. So with all of that out of the way, we can now focus on the Shulker Box distribution system. This came from a very simple idea. I wanted to change the primary color of Shulker Boxes on Wavetech from white to gray, as well as using other colors for other very specific tasks like the black boxes for those underfloor displays, yellow boxes for the item sorting, as well as purple boxes for the instackables. Oh, and if you're wondering what this is, this used to be the supply of red shulker boxes to a redstone box maker, which we decided to discard from the storage design early on in the design. However, I kept the distribution system here just because it could be useful in the future. And with the mere suggestion of organizing the way that Wavetech uses different colors of shulker boxes, got me laughed at pretty hard. After all, white shulker boxes were absolutely prolific around the Wavetech server already, and a lot of the time, people were just too lazy to even bother dyeing them in the first place, giving us lots of the regular ugly colour. So, players on the Wavetech server believed that there was no way in hell that any machine would force them into one uniform colour across the entire server. But this main storage had another thing coming. This all begins with the shulker box color sorter, which automatically organizes all the shulker boxes by their color into these storages, which will then cache all the boxes. And once one of these is full, it will stack the boxes together by dispensing them into this cauldron. I can demonstrate that quickly. There we go, this is full now. And then it will stack up all these purple shulker boxes together, like so. And once they're all stacked together in entity form, they get dropped into these hoppers, which can hold the stacks, or redistribute them into this system, where the player can stack them manually by simply interacting with them. Underneath the storage for the different shulker box colors, we then have the logic for the shulker box distribution system and this 
was surprisingly complicated to make because you're talking about a remote system such as this under four box display where if I go ahead and just take out all the boxes from it it will then send a signal all the way around the storage all the way to the shortcut box request system and as you can see it's already sending a stack of black shulker boxes into this distribution system to refill that exact box display that we took the boxes out of. With the ability for many remote systems to tap into a universal shulker supply system, we can effectively force WaveTaken members to our will. Nobody escapes the shulker inquisition. I know this video is getting pretty long already, but there's just one last really cool thing I need to show you. Earlier on, I touched on the chunk loading in the nether side. Well, you might notice that the chunk loading in the overworld side is all the way up there. However, all the systems that need to use the chunk loading are all the way down here. So you might ask, how on earth is the main storage communicating with the chunk loader when it needs to be on? Well, if you're a regular viewer of my channel, you might know that a wireless redstone exists and it can hurt you. Okay, maybe I was lying about that second part, but still, this is so cool. Like, watch this. If I punch this note block, this will trigger a transmitter. This one in particular activates whenever an item goes through this dropper line into the sorting system. So this sort of preemptively charges up the chunk loading grid to make sure that it's running by the time items start getting sorted. Let's go ahead and punch this note block. If we go all the way up here, we might be able to catch... There we go. The receiver has received the signal. And now the chunk loading is active. And an added bonus is that we can even make the beacon dance to indicate that the chunk loading is active. Isn't that awesome? But do keep in mind that the addition of a chunk loading grid to a storage system also comes with the requirement to chunk load your system. This storage isn't particularly fussy about the exact alignment we want to make sure that the center of the storage is approximately in the center of a chunk. But you might ask, Cubic, why are you giving me tips for how to build your storage? And you might be right. I don't know who would be insane enough to try and build this in survival. After all, it took several skilled technical players several weeks to fully complete this. And big disclaimer, I've had to fix the thing several times already. However, I should point out that these failures were entirely due to the entire system being unloaded while I was running due to the server literally restarting. The parallel entity item sorter in particular is extremely fussy about being unloaded while it's running. And this is just an unfortunate truth. Big redstone machines break easily if you unload them while they're running. They don't use mine or anybody else's storage design for that matter unless you're prepared to crawl for its guts and fix it when things go wrong. If only I could tell you about the amount of times I had to crawl through here and check through every one of these chests to make sure that all the items are still in there. The scary warnings aside, this storage is still perfect for what WaveTech needs as a technical server and will serve us greatly in the future. I will be posting a world download to the storage and its breakdown down in the description so you can go take a gander yourself, take notes and maybe learn something about storage tech yourself. And before I go, I think there's one more thing that needs to be cleared up. That's right, the chest monster from the Shulker Farm build, where we first introduced the main storage project, is still here waiting to be sorted. And finally, justice is served. Be gone, foul chest monster. And with that saga concluded, thank you very much for watching. And I will see you next time.